Welcome back to the channel. Today's video will be going over a small little camera that I recently just came across probably a week ago and a few reasons why I love this camera, a few reasons why I think it's a great travel camera, and a few reasons why I decided to bring this camera with me to a Miami trip instead of my Sony or the DJI Pocket 3. Now the camera that we're gonna be talking about is the Nikon Z30. It's small enough to almost be like a point and shoot camera, but it also has an interchangeable lens on here. It comes with the kit lens, which is a 16 to 50. Now just keep in mind, this is a crop sensor camera. Quality that you are getting out of this, super great. I absolutely fell in love with this camera the, the very first day I started using it in Miami. It's super small, it fits in the palm super easy. I was kind of against crop sensor cameras, but to have something that is this small and powerful, super great quality, photos look amazing, video quality is, unreal um so yeah so a few reasons why i decided to bring this with me to miami instead of let's just say the dji pocket 3 is that one i don't necessarily need my footage to be stable so having this on a gimbal or using the dji pocket 3 you know not every time or every scenario or every time i'm shooting with something it has to be super steady which is why i also love this camera because it fits in the hand perfect it allows very stable footage the stabilization in this is amazing and also the dji pocket 3 there's no zoom function except for adding like a digital zoom in the actual gimbal itself this has a 16 to a 50 zoom option and the lens is super small so i'm able to fit this whole system into my little handbag a few reasons why i love this camera it's got it's got a tilting screen the video the video quality on this is amazing it shoots up to 4k 30. so this doesn't do 4k 60 the max it'll do is 4k 30 but it will also do 1080 120 and 1080 60 which i haven't tried out now i haven't shot with nikon in a while uh, i think it's been like over seven eight years and i remember they had a flat profile which was almost good enough to put out there without even color grading it but it was also super easy to color grade this camera doesn't come with the z-log it only has the flat picture profile and other picture profiles that nikon has so this camera has a setting that's called active d lighting which i have it turned off because i wanted to get the cleanest image on my camera if you are shooting a low light situation i would recommend having it turned off because it's essentially gonna be boosting your shadows and adding grain in there. I would recommend turning that off just to get the cleanest image. So now low light on this camera is amazing. Another reason why I decided to bring this besides other cameras is the low light performance on this camera. I was able to shoot at ISO 8000 and from what I can tell on the screen, the quality looked super clear. Now, mind you, I was shooting at an F 3.5 or an F 6. After coming back from Miami, I am super happy with bringing the Nikon 30 with me on this trip because, you know, it's able to do both photos and videos, which brings me to my next point. The photos on this, I believe it's a 20.4 20 megapixel or 21, 21 megapixel. Not 100% sure. I'm not really used to taking photos on a camera that doesn't have a viewfinder, which brings me to the next point that this camera does not have a viewfinder. So if you're a person who likes shooting through a viewfinder, like if you're a Canon person, this might take some time to get used to. Um, I kind of enjoyed it because on my Sony FX3, there's no viewfinder to shoot on. So I was kind of used to already shooting photos without the viewfinder. I'm not one of those people to like look at the screen, take photos. I like to see it with my eye. I like to have it up close to my eye instead of looking at a screen because it could get somewhat hard during the day or a sunny day shooting photos, looking at a screen or even video. But that also brings me to the next topic that the screen brightness on this camera and the quality that this little LCD screen gives is amazing. I didn't have any hard time looking at the screen during a bright day. The quality and the contrast, the colors, I don't really think there's one thing that I don't like about this camera. Maybe only besides that it's a crop sensor, but I think I'm starting to get used to it. I love the kit lens that it comes with. Like this was super easy to put in my handbag or side bag 
just walking around. Like it doesn't track people like, like a sore thumb with a huge camera. Like this is basically it. It's super small, super compact. The battery is decent. I only really charged this camera once while I was in Miami. I was in Miami for three nights, four days. Uh, and you can actually charge it by USB-C, um, which I find took pretty, f didn't take long at all to charge. Um, I think it's just because I, when I, whenever I wasn't using it, I just let it sit to charge. And then whenever I would go outside, I would just unplug it and I would be at a full battery. Um, one strange thing that I still am trying to get used to is the memory card is actually where the battery slot is which I kind of thought was a little weird at first. As soon as I got the camera, I was trying to see where the memory card was uh, until I opened up the battery slot and it's right next to the battery, which camera doesn't have a full HDMI, which I'm not even mad about. It's fine. I can't even see myself using a full HDMI or an HDMI monitor on this camera. I think I'm just gonna be strictly using this for vlogging or traveling because it gets the job done. If you guys are looking for an entry level camera that does a little bit of everything, good quality, low light photos, that doesn't have an electronic viewfinder, uh, the battery's decent, I would highly recommend picking up the Nikon Z30. I think this is available for 899 or something under a thousand bucks, which I find it to be a good deal. Now, comparing this to the Pocket 3, the DJI Pocket 3, the DJI Pocket 3 just has one lens or you could put that wide angle lens. Like I said, I just don't need a steady image all the time, especially on a gimbal. The fact that I'm able to zoom from a 60 to a 50, mind you, this is crop. So 60, 16 is probably like maybe a 28 or 27 to a 30, which is still fine. It doesn't even look like a 30, it almost looks like a 25-ish. Um, which is still fine. I have a bigger screen on here than I do on the Pocket 3. Just fine to have more of an organic image shooting on something that's more of like a point and shoot camera or this Nikon here specifically, if I'm gonna be comparing it to the DJI Pocket 3. Now they do have the Sony ZV-1, which is a couple years old. I was looking into getting that camera, but looking at the Nikon Z30, it's almost the same size as the Sony ZV-1, but I'm also able to change my lenses on here. So I'm actually able to use this as a B cam if I'm shooting like weddings or just an interview style. Now talking about the flat profile, there are settings where you can get more of a flatter image than using the flat profile that comes out on the Nikon Z30, which I don't think I'd recommend because I believe this is only an 8-bit codec. Um, so I wouldn't wanna push it too far, even though the Sony ZV-1 has the S-Log2 or S-Log3 in that camera. I just feel like having that flat profile, it's just perfect enough to grade, or you can even leave it as is if you want a little bit of a less saturated, flatter image. But grading these images, I've tested it out on my phone by using the SD adapter to a USB-C on my iPhone 15. It's very easy to grade the flat picture profile. I would highly recommend looking into the, the Nikon Z series if they have the flat profile, if not the Z-Log profile. The flat profile is awesome to grade, I love it, but I'm super happy that I picked this up. It's a great little camera, quality is amazing. Photos and video, great hybrid if you want something under a thousand bucks. If you guys enjoyed the footage coming out on the Nikon Z30, let me know in the comments below. I will do my best to kind of post everything that I shot overlapping with all this talking head stuff to demonstrate on how good this camera is. But yeah, until then, we'll see you guys on the next video.